Hey, what's up everyone? Ragey Golden Eagle here, having way too much fun as always. And especially today because I'm going to bring to your guys' attention the Title IX story we have all been waiting for. Male student accuses female student of sexual assault. She says he wanted revenge. And for the record, I really do wish the author of this article had put a little spoiler tag on the tagline here in the title, because it does kind of give away the spoiler at the very end. Though since it's conveniently exactly the thing I want to talk about, here goes nothing. Title IX creates a prisoner's dilemma. Students have to file sexual misconduct complaints to avoid becoming the accused. Wow, who could have imagined this happening, huh? All I gotta say to this is, thank God discrimination based on gender is a thing, and there's legal consequences for discriminating. Because if this was not the case, you bet your ass they would make Title IX only apply to women. But either way, let's get into a little bit of the background here. This case is special because it involves a male accuser and a female aggressor. And this right here is going to lead us to the interesting bits. The female student's lawsuit against Cincinnati, which accuses the university of violating her due process rights. I wonder if people are actually going to care now that it's happening to a woman. Nobody seemed to have cared for the past couple of years when it's happening to men. But yeah, we'll see. But either way, this lawsuit reveals something even odder. This woman had previously filed a sexual misconduct complaint against one of the dude's friends. So obviously he's just trying to do this for revenge, right? He's just trying to get her back for his bro. Oh, and tell me if you've heard this one before. She contends that it was ridiculous to find her guilty of non-consensual sex because of the guy's drunkenness, but not find the guy guilty too as she was also drunk at the time. So under the rules, she was just as unable to consent to sex as he was. Oh my god! Holy shit, this is the second time I'm just being smacked in the face with some deja vu. Why does this sound so familiar? Could it possibly be that this is the exact argument we've been making since Title IX came into existence? Uh, it can't be it, it must be something else. Either way, moving on. While this might seem like a paradox, how can two young people rape each other? It would actually be a straightforward application of affirmative consent which requires all participants in a sexual encounter to proactively obtain freely given and unambiguous consent before proceeding. So yeah, under this bullshit law, these two really did rape each other. So they should both be sent to prison, huh? This is what happens when you push these bullshit laws through on nothing but feelings and don't think about it first. So either way, since it was the guy that filed his accusation first, the woman in this situation is being treated pretty much exactly like guys have been treated all this time. She's pretty much suspended from the school until the guy graduates. She's trying to appeal, but the star chamber keeps denying her. So just like any guy in her position, she had no choice but to file a lawsuit. And it's this lawsuit that brings out all the interesting information here. Her theory that the guy's complaint was a form of revenge is interesting, and it could be true. Perhaps the whole thing was a setup. He lured her to his bedroom, feigned being drunk, and initiated sexual contact, fully intending to race to the Title IX office the next day. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Here's an alternative theory. The dude woke up, realized they had engaged in sexual activity while they were both drunk, and feared that she would file a complaint against him exactly as she had done to his friend. Panic-stricken, he felt he had no choice but to beat her to the punch. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? She has a history of filing accusations. He just had a sexual encounter with her. Oops. You can clearly see the possibility that he may have done what he did just to protect himself, not to get revenge. Though for what it's worth, possibly both of those are true. He's protecting himself, but on the other hand, maybe he doesn't feel all that bad about it for obvious reasons. Gotta love the environment that current year colleges have created, huh? And the article ends off on some uh, pretty good advice. Indeed, if you suspect you are going to become the subject of a Title IX investigation, the optimal strategy may very well be to file the first complaint. For reasons not completely clear to me, Title IX administrators often appear biased in favor of the initial complaint and presume the other party is the wrongdoer. Okay, before I sign off, I'm gonna help a brother out. I'll make the reason clear to you. Three simple words is all it takes. Listen and believe. There you go. There's your answer. In the era of listen and believe, you just gotta be the first one to get your story out. And that's all I gotta say, guys. Thanks for listening.